Hello and welcome back to the Arduino Dice Roller series. In the first part, we went over this super large function and we basically made it much, much shorter, just seven lines of code. And now we are going to see how to add the game logic. When you run the code, it currently displays the patterns from one, two, three, four, five, and six repeatedly. And now we want to add some randomness into our dice roller. So instead of displaying this sequence of numbers from one to six, we are going to use the random function for that. And that would be something like display ra number random between one and uh, seven. The reason I write seven here is that the second argument for random is the upper boundary and it will only choose numbers below this. So basically between one and six. And if I run it, it will seem like we have two and then six and then three and then five. And it seems pretty random, but what you can see, if I run it again, you can see it has the same numbers. I can run this program 100 of times and every time it will give me the same sequence, two, six, three, five. And uh, let's add some debug print so we can actually see this in action. So uh, just uh, let's put this into a new number called, a new variable called num. And then we can serial print num. And we can see that the, 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 this is basically the same sequence, two, two, six, three, five, three. And if we run it again, it's again, two, two, three, six, three, five, three. So it's not so random. And the reason for that is that Arduino is not really able to pull random numbers out of the thin air. It actually uses some algorithm to generate this sequence of pseudo random numbers. And we can help Arduino by calling a special function at the beginning of the program called random seed. And this function takes a number. If we give it some arbitrary number, let's say 42, you can see that uh, we start getting a new sequence of random numbers, but we still have the same problem. If we run the program again and again, so now it was like one, two, six, six, we'll get the same sequence again, one, two, six, six. So now we get a different sequence, but it's still the same sequence every time we run our program. In order to fix that, we would need to somehow give random seed a different number every time that the program is running. And there are some ways to do that. One of them would be to use the analog read function and read from some free analog pin. So in our case, we are using A0, A4, A5, and A3. So A1 and A2 are free, and we can just use analog read A1. When we run the code, we can see that now we have a different sequence, six, five, four, three, two, three. It almost seemed like it wasn't random, but then when we run it for the second time, we'll get a totally different sequence. So what this line of code does is basically reading the voltage level at this A1 pin. And since this pin is floating, not connected to anything, it will just pick up some random noise and random noise is the best way to generate random numbers. And this is sort of the standard way to get random numbers from Arduino, but um, it has some drawbacks. For instance, if I physically take this pin and touch it with my finger, I can affect the value that analog read returns and basically make this random not so random again. So let me show you another way to do this. In this project, we have this button connected to pin A0. Now it's connected between pin A0 and ground. So in other words, if I were to draw the connections, that would look something like this pin goes to Arduino pin A0. And then the other one, the other side of the button goes to the ground of Arduino. So it goes here. This means that whenever I click this button here, I basically close a circuit between A0 and ground. So I will read this pin low whenever the button is pressed. Now, if I want to read the value of this uh, button in the code, I need to set it as A0 should be input pull up, which basically means that it will read the value high 
as long as it's not pressed, as long as this A0 is disconnected. And as soon as the button is pressed, A0 will be shorted to ground and reading from this A0 pin will return the value low. Let's see that. We are going to do um, while digital read from A0 is high basically do nothing so as long as the button is not pressed i'm going to do nothing just wait for the button to be pressed and if i run the code you will be able to see that now i have nothing on these leds until i press the buttons and then i get the re next random number so two three etc so let's see how to use the input from this button in order to generate random numbers what we will do, we will look for the first time the user pressed on the button. So we'll have a Boolean variable uh, first time that is starting with true. And then we are saying if this is the first time, then we are going to do this. First of all, let's remove this uh, random seed from the setup and move it down here. And instead of calling it with the value of analog read as we did before, we are going to call it with a different value. This time we'll use the value that is returned by the micros function. And this function basically returns the number of microseconds since the program has started running. We'll also set first time to false. So just to make sure that this only runs the first time we click on the A0 button. And let's also add a debug print so you can see what uh, the value of micros look like when we uh, run the program. Now you can see that as soon as I click the button, it actually uses the number of microseconds between the program start time and my click, my first click, in order to generate the random seed. So in this case, it was about 2.3 seconds. And now, if I run the program again, you will see that the time until my first click is slightly different. This time it was 0.8 seconds and we got a different random number. So this is the second method of generating random numbers using Arduino. Instead of using the analog pins of Arduino and reading from these uh, analog pins in order to get some randomness, we are just using the, the timing of the user the time it took the user to press the button in order to generate randomness in our program. Isn't that cool? At this point, we got the basic logic of our project working. We can choose random numbers and we can display them on these LEDs. And now it's a good time to add some final touches. So instead of displaying the result immediately when the user clicks on the button, let's add some suspense. We can achieve this by wrapping these lines in a for loop that will run for 10 times whenever the user presses the button. So that would look something like a uh, 4 byte i goes from 0 until uh, 10 and then execute those uh, commands. And instead of having like half a second delay, we will have um, a delay that increases each iteration of the loop. So that would be something like 50 milliseconds plus 20 times i. So basically the first one will be 50 and then the next iteration will be 70. And in this way, the LEDs will display different patterns with an increasing delay every time we click on the button. Let's see that. So one, and you can see it sort of slows down until it converges on a final number. Let's try that again. So it starts fast and then it slows down. And I'm pretty happy with the code that we created so far. And I think I'm ready to deploy it to a real device. So let's do it. We have the same setup here on the left side on the screen where you can see this uh, Arduino board that is connected to the button and the LEDs just like we had in the virtual playground. And now we are going to upload the coder. So upload to Arduino, it's building, let's upload and it's programming. It says that the programming failed, but this is actually because this feature is still in beta. So sometimes it says that it fails, but it actually succeeds. So let's try that. I'm going to press the button and let's see what happens. 
Oh yeah, we got our dice roller working and it's so cool. Hooray, we did it. Thanks for watching and I hope that you learned something new today. If you want, you can find the link to the code in the video description below. Until next time, bye bye.